Hello and welcome back to The Note, coming to you again this week from New York. Today I'd like to talk about the ongoing attempts to deal with the consequences of the great crisis of 2008. Now of course it's a widespread complaint that not enough heads have rolled because of that crisis, that no big financiers have done jail time as a result. But nevertheless there are very major attempts to come to legal settlements over those issues that arose during the crisis years and we have news today that there is a big settlement in the works involving JP Morgan. With me now to discuss this is our regulation correspondent Cara Scannell. Cara, thanks very much for joining me today. What are we about to hear of from JP Morgan? And they are involved in a lot of different legal undertakings at this moment. What is this settlement that they're working on now? So this settlement, it's uh, JP Morgan's going to pay $13 billion to the US government, which will include that the Department of Justice, a number of other regulatory agencies and state attorneys general in New York and California to resolve civil allegations about their mis-selling of mortgage securities before the financial crisis. Okay, so this doesn't cover criminal liability and is this primarily they bought both Bear Stearns and Washington Mutual or WAMU during 2008 as this sort of part of the efforts to rescue institutions. Are, are, are these liabilities that they picked up in those deals? The, the settlement will include liabilities from both Bear Stearns and WAMU, which were two big originators of mortgages. And uh, that was a little bit of the tricky part of the settlement. There's a lot of back and forth on whether the bank should have to assume those liabilities. But they ultimately are close to working out a settlement with DOJ that will include kind of all of the legacy of the financial crisis mortgage underwritings. Now, obviously, JP Morgan's been in, in the news a lot recently because it's had other legal travails, particularly regarding the London Whale case. What other settlements, what else other sums of money have they agreed to pay in the last few months? Uh, the bank has uh, paid um, more than $200 million to settle with the SEC, which is also civil claims related to the London Whale. Um, they have paid previously uh, claims to the SEC to resolve their underwriting of collateralized debt obligations. Uh, so in total, when all this is said and done, the bank will be paying close to $20 billion to resolve just mortgage-related, financial crisis-related litigation. Which, to put it in context, because I just looked it up on Bloomberg, is roughly the market cap at the moment of Netflix, $20 billion. However, $20 billion isn't going to settle everything, as I understand it. What, what do they still have ahead, ahead of them before JP, uh, Jamie Dimon can, can uh, put this all to rest? Well, you would have thought the financial crisis was the big one, but there are still a lot of cases that go back a couple of years that are now coming to fruition. There's the open question of whether JP Morgan will have to pay any amount of money related to the Madoff uh, Ponzi scheme. JP Morgan was Madoff's big banker, and the question is, should they have known? Did they miss red flags? They're also facing a criminal investigation related to the whale. They're facing civil and criminal investigation into hiring practices in Hong Kong and throughout Asia. And they're also still dealing with an investigation, uh, a criminal one this time, into whether they manipulated or their traders manipulated electricity markets in California. Now, that's really quite a stunning list, even if it is a very big bank. What's intriguing is if you take a look at their share price, they've, they've still performed far better than the average bank since the crisis, and this doesn't seem to have affected them very much over the last few months. And similarly, uh, it doesn't seem to have affected profits very much so far. Um, can they continue to maintain the goodwill of investors through this, do you think? And why have regulators got this tough at this point with, with JP Morgan? It's a, it is amazing that the share price hasn't really reacted that much, even having the first loss under Diamond as the CEO of the bank. Uh, I mean, it, I think it reflects a lot of the confidence that investors still have in him as a leader. Uh, there was a lot of pressure earlier this year at the shareholder meeting of whether the, his role as chairman and CEO should have been split, but the investors didn't vote in, in favor of that, right. and so he maintains both roles. But we've also have seen a change of tone from the regulators. Uh, my my sourcing um, reflects that there is a little bit of a lack of confidence there. The regulators feel like. Perhaps the bank has too many issues before them, and so they're not taking things as lightly as maybe they would have before, or just assuming that the bank had it under control. Because what we've seen in some of these settlements is a bit of a um, uh, you know, less communication with the board, and perhaps uh, less robust risk-taking compliance than what regulators might have thought from the outside before a lot of these facts came to light. Okay, Cara, thank you very much indeed. It's all, I think everybody can agree, an extremely complicated saga. 
It's also very intriguing that JP Morgan, which initially after the crisis appeared to be the bank that had uh, uh, survived almost unscathed, is now the focus for a lot of this uh, activity. But I suppose the pos positive points we can make about it are that uh, perhaps we are now beginning to get to grips with the, uh, the problems that were created by the, the crisis that will ultimately help public confidence in the banking sector.